Welcome back to Tech Yes Cities. Brandy's coming back to you guys today with, or finally coming back to you guys today with an unboxing and review of the MSI GDX 780 Lightning Edition, baby. Now, this thing just rocked up in the mail, so the postman was like, Look, when do you want me to deliver this thing? I just said, Look, any time of the day. And he's like, Any time of the day? I said, Yeah, any time of the day. So he delivered this thing to me at 9 30 at night because I wanted it ASAP. Anyway, I know there's some people out there that are going to be thinking, thinking, look, Brian, why didn't you get the uh, AMD, you know, 290? And then there's, I know there's going to be some people in the audience who are like, GDX 780, yeah, boy, and fist pumping. So, you know, honestly, uh, when you guys get a GDX, uh, M well, G MSI GDX 780 Lightning Edition for 520 USD delivered internationally, then that is reason to fist pump. So, uh, anyway, based on how this thing goes, they might even have to rename this the MSI uh, GDX 780 Fist Pump Edition. So anyway, as soon as we, as soon as I got this box, it sort of, it gave me a nostalgic feeling in that uh, I haven't really sort of got a box that, this, this heavy before. Like the box just looks really good before you even unbox it. So there's just so much detail here. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff printed on the box itself, but I'll explain it as I go through the unboxing here. Now, as soon as you unbox this thing, this is just amazing. I, I'm just shocked. Like, this is like a, a collector's item. I mean, this box is really heavy. It's really sturdy. And it sort of gives a new definition to the premium products. And, you know, I think MSI this time around are doing a really good job with their products. I mean, uh, you guys know that I got the MSI G45. It was, it was you know, it, was a good, it looked like a good value for money board. And it actually turned out to be an extremely good value for money board overclocked well, did all this well, and then I thought, hey, you know, the MSI Lightning's going for a good price, I'm going to try and pick it up. Now, basically, before we get into it, uh, you know, this this thing just literally uh, just screams attention, like, they've really paid attention to detail with this product. Uh, here's the first part of the box here. You've got what looks like a bottom case here, so you pull this out, and it looks like you've got a back plate here. So you can attach that to the actual um, back of the video card, I believe. It looks like a black back plate. Um, but yeah, I'll actually get onto that later once I've unboxed it all and installed it. I'll let you know, let you guys know what it actually is. But then we open up this side here. We've got the certificate of quality just to let you know that they've put in a lot of components. But we'll go through what the components are when we look at the card itself. Now you do get an SLI bridge with this and also a six, two six pin to eight pin adapters by the looks of it. You also get the CD, but you're not gonna need the CD because you just, yeah, you're gonna generally download the latest drivers anyway off the MSI or off the NVIDIA website. So that's the first part of the unboxing. And must I, and God, my God, this is just like literally, it's like a treasure box. Like, God damn, this thing, is attention to detail so okay so i thought i'd save you guys some time and i'd just quickly take it out of the static wrapping and show you the card itself so here's the graphics card itself as you can see here it is just a mammoth of a card it is one huge card it's the biggest graphics card i've ever seen the air cooler itself is two and a half slots now these are the three fans so this is the new tri frozer design from msi and i must admit it's a really impressive design i mean the, the fans themselves they're big these are 92 millimeter fans and these this one here is an 80 millimeter fan and they feel really sturdy like there's no shaft play at all in the fans now another thing is you could, these are fans are all independently controlled so you can set different fan speeds for different portions say if you're just overclocking the gpu you can overclock these two fans and leave this one pretty cool leave it on a lower um, state so whatever you want to do you can do it with this graphics card now let's look at the cooler on the side here we'll have a look so you can see here it is a two and a half slot cooler and it is just a beast it feels really well built uh, it feels about one and a half kilo i'll have to weigh it and check it for you guys but if it is indeed one and a half kilo then it's pretty much twice the size of my galaxy gdx 670 and it's a, a lot bigger than my Gigabyte GDX 670 as well. So let's have a look at the rear here now. We've got the, uh, as we turn over to the rear of the card, we have the MSI backplate. And also this is the GPU reactor. Basically this is a thing, this is an add-on from MSI, which you can remove. Uh, it lights up blue and it looks really good as well. I must admit it looks really good, but also it has a function and that is it's a, an extra filter 
for overclocking. So it's an extra filter for the power, which basically helps deliver a more stable overclock. So you can remove that if you want to, um, but I'm gonna keep it on. The back plate feels really well built as well. It looks really good as well. Over here we have two SLI uh, connectors as well, which is capable of supporting in theory up to quad SLI, but um, you know, really, I think NVIDIA put a limit of just try SLI, so it's up to you guys. Uh, but you know, try SLI is you wouldn't want to go over that anyway because drivers and you know, you think it doesn't scale at all once it pretty much, <laughs> very little once you go past uh, three cards. So, anyway, let's look at so it's got nice lightning printed there as well. But looking at the this side of the card now is, is where things start to get interesting. This here lights up green, blue, and red, I think. And, Depending on the power state, it'll light up a different color. So it's really cool. You can just quickly look at your card and know how much power you're using uh, without a power meter, which is actually a pretty cool thing. Uh, this here, this little switch, if we look in here, that's actually the BIOS switch as well. So there's actually three states there. Even though it is very difficult to get to the middle state, the middle state, so the one on the left, if I flick it to the left, that is your, um, that's your default overclocked uh, out of the factory BIOS. Uh, if we push it to the right, that is your liquid nitrogen or un everything unlocked BIOS. In the middle is a fail-safe BIOS, but I think you're going to need a pin because you have to be very careful to get it to the middle. So, but either way, I love this feature because as I'll talk about this so at the end of the at the end of this video, I'll talk about this card a lot more in depth. But over here, we've got two eight-pin connectors as well. So uh, basically, really good. You know, can support. Um, you know, it's got the extra phases in the card and it needs these power connectors to deliver more stable power, which I really like. Uh, let's look at the front of the card now. Okay, so looking at the back of the card, sorry, not the front of the card, we have three independent voltage connectors here. So one for the GPU, one for the memory, and one for the auxiliary. So you can hook up an independent meter and check the voltages manually if you wish to, which is a really good feature. You can see here all the three fans are connected independently as well. So you can disconnect them if you wish to, or you know, do what you want to. So there's, as you can see here, here's the heat pipes as well in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven heat pipes as well. I believe they're eight millimeter as well. So let's turn over to the rear of the card now. Okay, so here is the rear of the card. We have four display outs here. We have a DV, DVI-D. This is a DVI-D port, which is your... Uh, this is the port I'm going to be using for my 120 hertz monitor. This is a DVI-I, I believe. Uh, so both support 120 hertz. Uh, both are dual link ports as well, which is really good. Now, interestingly enough, you'll probably see here these are gold plated. So that's another good feature from MSI. Now, the HDMI, it supports uh, full HDMI out as well as a display port out. So that's the display port options you have there. Okay, lastly, I will say MSI also include a 16 plus 3 phase power design with this. Uh, if you contrast this to a reference design, a reference design is only 6 plus 2 phases. So you've got over double the phases for the GPU, and you've got 50% more phases for the memory. So it's really, this card is just made to be a high overclocker. Uh, also, MSI include their dark solid caps as well, and a copper MOSFET. So they just put really high components into this graphics card to ensure the high overclocks and also to help with longevity of the card. So really good features. Anyway, I've talked enough about this card. Let's put it in to the computer, put it in the rig. Let's test it up. I'm gonna be comparing this to the overclocked GDX 670. And then also I'm gonna be overclocking it and comparing it to itself. So let's get on with the results. All right, so now we're looking at the results here. Uh, the first uh, benchmark being at Battlefield 4 1080p at Ultra. And also when I was doing these benchmarks, it taught me a lot about the different games I was benchmarking. As you can see here, Battlefield 4 is a very GPU dependent game. Uh, looking at the results here, we've got the 780 on a custom overclock or the cock. And we've got a GDX 780 on a factory overclock or the fock. And so the difference between the factory overclock and the custom overclock was about 10 percent so it was a huge gain over the gdx 670 as well if you look at the just factory overclock versus factory overclock we can see here that we're getting about a 40 percent increase over gdx 670 which is huge and this is a gigabyte model as well i'm comparing the gigabyte model to the gdx 780 and so the gdx 780 just is a beast of a card uh, my you guys are probably wondering what my custom overclock is well my custom overclock is 1200 and i think it boosted all the way up to 1254 megahertz with a 49 millivolt um, boost 
as well on the millivolt. So I, I gave it a bit more voltage, and I, I was man the max I managed to get out of it was 12:54 before it started artifacting. So it was a mediocre overclock. Uh, not the best, but certainly not the worst either. Uh, looking at Skyrim at 1080p Ultra here, as you guys can probably see, there is just next to no difference at all. We got 161.08, 161, so it even did a little bit worse when the GDX 780 was installed. And then we had 162.72 when the 780 was overclocked. So that's the different results there. So as you can tell, Skyrim is a CPU intensive game. And uh, one GPU maxing out the CPU, which is pretty impressive. And that's a 4670K, by the way, which is the latest architecture. So um, that's pretty, yeah, that, that was an eye opener for me how CPU intensive Skyrim really was. Uh, looking at here, we got the GDX 670 with a 9840 on. GP, uh, 3D Mark 11 with the GPU score. Getting looking at the 780, it scored 14,235. So that's a huge increase, almost 50% there. And learn, I managed to overclock it. I managed to get the memory also up by. I got the memory up 400 megahertz as well. So it was running at 6,400 megahertz. And I got the, the clock up to 1254. So that was a custom overclock there, and that managed to score 15,850, which is damn impressive. And these overclocks, by the way, are absolutely no artifacting. I mean, some people will get these really high overclocks, and they will be artifacting during they're doing the test just so they can achieve an epic high score. But I'm not, definitely not going to do that, as there's no point. Uh, but here we got here Unigine Valley. And we saw here the average frame rate, the average FPS was 102 on the custom overclock and 92.8 on the factory overclock. So there was at least a good, a solid 10%, 12, I'd say about 12% increase in frames per second across all different benchmarks. And comparing that to the GDX 670, again, it was a good 50% faster, just factory overclock versus the GDX 670 factory overclock. So very damn impressive. This this card is an absolute beast. I'll talk about, after these benchmarks, I'll sort of talk a little bit more about the card and different features. But when we see here, power consumption was a lot more, though. Uh, 390 in Unigine Valley. Uh, when we moved over to the GDX 7080, it consumed about 100 watts more on average, my whole t total system usage. Uh, when I overclocked it, it went all the way up to 540. That's when it was peaking out. So I was pretty damn, in, uh, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say impressed, but I was surprised at how much power consumption went up when I put the GDX 780 in. Uh, mind you, the performance is huge, and it's definitely worth it. Uh, looking at the max temps, this is, this is a very good... A test to look at because we see how good the tri uh cooling solution from MSI is. This is all with the fan speed set to auto. So I think the max fan speed was reported was 46%, and even then it was barely audio audible. So amazing job from the tri there. It got up to 68 degrees maximum. This was done at about 15, 16 degrees ambient temps, and the temps went up to 68 degrees. So I've still got another 10 degrees room there, and I can just leave my fans on auto and not have to worry at all. The factory overclock ran really cool, maxing out at 61 degrees and only 38% on the fan speed. So, I mean, if you wanted to go really heavy on the overclocks, you could up the fan speeds to maybe 70%. And even then, it wouldn't be that loud. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering how big is this thing. So this is when I'll start to talk about the card a little bit more and what impressed me about this graphics card. Now, I thought, when I first got my GDX 670, I thought, damn, this card was huge. This was back last year, uh, sometime in, I think, May. I forgot when exactly when I purchased it. But that was coming from a Radeon 5850. And the GDX 670 was bigger than the Radeon 5850. Now this GDX 780 is just a beast. It's a mammoth of a card. It's longer, it's thicker. It just, the cooler is also a two and a half slot. So we'll look at the photos here and you can see that it's just that much longer on the end. And it's also a little bit thicker, I believe, as well. The actual width of the card is thicker. Not to mention the depth of the card as well is a bit bigger as well. So this card is just a beast. When I first read the reviews and people were like, oh, this card's big, I thought, no, nah, it can't be that much bigger than a GDX 670. But believe me, it is a lot bigger than a GDX 670. So it's just a huge card. I managed to get it on the scales and it did weigh in at 1,507 grams. So over twice the weight of my Galaxy GDX 670 and almost two times the weight of this 
uh, gigabyte win force as well so this is just one beast of a card however it does use a bit of extra power and one thing to note is that so I'll pull up to the big screen for you guys is that it's one thing to note with this card is that it does use the extra power but it does give you impressive performance figures so the tri Frozer from MSI is just one well built graphics card I'm really impressed with this card even though I got a mediocre overclocker um, it's not that big of a worry for me uh, I wish I could have got one of those cards that went up to 1400 megahertz, but once I started going past about 1260, I started noticing little bits of artifacting. Even if I did up the millivolts to 62, that was the max with the BIOS. I mean, I can flash the BIOS, but there's no point as I'm not going to need the extra over voltage as my card starts to max out its overclocks at around 1250, so it doesn't like anything above that. So every GPU is unique. If you guys want, I could make a GPU overclock tutorial a more of an advanced one in the future uh, but it, was, it took me not too long to find the max overclock on this thing but it's a really impressive card and I can highly recommend this card it's just a premium product so this year uh, this is probably the second best product I've got the Enemax T40 was the one of the best value for money products I have bought this year at $30 it was an amazing cooler this product for I got it for $520 delivered off eBay it is damn impressive so I mean this is the second best product I've bought this year and I mean I just I've been buying impressive products this year and this is definitely one of them so if you guys enjoyed this review please give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions about this card please put a comment in the comment section below uh, also I will say that when you first start this card up as well it's kind of like they've, I don't know if it's just them if they unintentionally did this but when you start up the card there's kind of like this lightning sound as well it's like Voo! it's just the fans really spin up really quickly for a split second and it's actually pretty cool it adds that touch to the card not to mention yeah the card just felt wow it, the build quality felt impressive and the, the you know the treasure chest box was another bonus of having this card my god so I uh, highly recommend this card. I mean, I'm getting speeds that are similar to a 780 Ti superclocked. So when I overclock my 780 Ti, I'm getting speeds similar to a 780 Ti factory overclock. So, yeah, that's pretty impressive from MSI here. So, I mean, a 780 Ti cost me at least $800 in Japan. And then again, that's not a super clocked version as well. So, really good purchase this time around. I do think the GDX 780 is your sweet spot card at the moment. I mean, it's 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 just in that league. It's it's a really upper, high-end graphics card, and I can't recommend them enough. So I'm going to be enjoying my games just all maxed out. I'm going to plan on buying a 1440p monitor as well. I kind of want one that at least goes to 80 hertz. I mean, I know the 120 hertz ones are about a thousand dollars on eBay at the moment. They're just ridiculously expensive. So if anyone knows where I can get a cheap 1440p 120 hertz monitor let me know in the description i'd love to find where i could get one as i'm kind of keen to get one so maybe next year early next year anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this code a little vlog about this card if there's anything else i missed about this graphics card and you specifically know please leave a comment in the comment section below as well let people know and also after the new year's so i don't have much time until new year's after new year's i will start uh, whatever you guys request and upvote the most i will start doing vids on that whether it be benchmarks whether it be tests I will probably be buying an FX8350 and testing it against the 4670Ks. There's, a, there's just a lot of debate and a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of arguing going on around. The, not just my channel, the, a lot of forums I read too. So anyway, I'll uh, hopefully I get that done when I can. Anyways, if you haven't already, hit the sub button too. I'm going to be coming back with some more action, more tech news for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And peace out for now. Brandy's bite.